Let's bring in Mike Wise. Uh, it, it was snowing in Washington. It's raining. It's I think it's everything. It's Armageddon there. The uh, columnist for the Washington Post <laughs> who joins you us know, now. You know, uh, before you were a learned uh, journalist, yeah. and the fact that you you were once a talking hairdo, Dan. No, I still am. <laughs> Absolutely. But I like the writers who become talking hairdos because the writers are the ones who labeled us as talking hairdos. I love that. <laughs> That's a great point. Yeah, we're all, we're all celebrity journalists now, including <laughs> us with, with the, the follically challenge among us. All right. Mm. What happened yesterday? I, I liken the Redskins to Hanukkah. It's not Christmas. They they give you like eight presents here. It just keeps on giving. But, <laughs> but, but what Shanahan did yesterday, I, I now we're going to bench RG3 because we've got to protect him and worry about next season? Yeah, I, it's a hard one for me. I, you know, because – the the party line up until that moment was essentially this guy needs the reps and this guy is um, it, he didn't have the benefit of, of an off season uh, to become more of a drop pack quarterback because of his knee surgery and therefore we need to give him as many reps as he can and therefore Kirk Cousins you're not going to get on the field until this guy is so brittle and and you know, beholden to injury that we need to get him off the field. Maybe he feels that after 24 sacks in the last five games, Mm. and maybe he feels it because he wants to rub it in to an ownership that he doesn't believe in or trust right now. It also seems as if Shanahan is staking his territory here to say, I'm still the coach here. And, And we had Joe Torrey on last hour, and Joe said when it came to George Steinbrenner, I didn't let those comments infiltrate the locker room i wanted to make sure that they knew that i was the guy in charge the problem is rg3 probably feels a little empowered as well so you have i I don't know it's two it feels like a two-on-one fast break with the owner quarterback against mike shanahan yeah and that's the problem all along we've alluded to it on your show before dan it's just um i don't know how close robert griffin the third and dan snyder are um, and because they went to a movie premiere in L.A. together um, that I believe Dan's company funded for Tom Cruise uh, this summer, I, the fact that the, they went to each other's wedding and, and they spent Thanksgiving of last year together after the Dallas game. Um, it, look, every I, I know many owners have special relationships with their quarterbacks, but Dan's history of actually befriending his employees mm-hmm. and getting business mixed with pleasure has has you know been has enabled people like Clinton Portis and others to circumvent the coach and the organizational decision makers and go straight to the owner, and it's caused a lot of friction. And we thought that Dan was out of it this time. And clearly, if Mike Shanahan disseminated this report somehow through his minions or through himself to ESPN's Dan Graziano, that he essentially um, is upset with the relationship between the two, then. Then here we go again. Uh, Star Wars. Dan. Dan needs to befriend the biggest guy on the team, and therefore the coach's authority doesn't mean anything. Talking to Mike Wise, columnist, Washington Post, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Let me go back to the whole Shanahan story. The timing of it was so. Like, how does Mike think that that doesn't get out and have it attached to him that he wanted it to get out and get out now? It just seems like. Hey, you know what? Let me just detonate this thing. Let me let me let me see if you'll fire me and pay me that final year. Yeah, I, it doesn't it doesn't bode well for him on several levels um, because you you look at at some point you want you, you got to think that Mike Shanahan has an ego enough that he wants to get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And and by all accounts and measures, based on his longevity and his years as an offensive coordinator in San Francisco and obviously the two Super Bowls in Denver with John Elway, that you were just going to say that if he could rebuild this, this organization in Washington, he was a shoe in Well, that looked like it was on its way last year until the injury. And then all this stuff has been put in play over the last year in which they've ended up 3-10. and 10. And so here's my, here's my gut. Mike Shanahan, Dan, has decided – this is his last card to play. I mean, my colleague Jason Reed wrote a column about his relationship, the RG3's relationship with Shanahan and, and, and his son Kyle and how the, the trifecta was not, perception-wise, the, the quarterback felt 
two-on-one, just like the coach feels two-on-one with the quarterback and the owner. And therefore, we all get distorted reality in our heads sometimes and make up stories about people are against us. But if if it's there and it's happened before, you know, I don't blame him in some ways. So I think this was Shanahan's last card, and he thought, look, i got to get out of this, and I have to be fired. I'm not going to walk away from $7 million next year. I need to be fired, and I can sell the whole notion of, look, I worked for Dan Snyder, and it didn't (laughs) matter who it was, Marty Schottenheimer, Norv Turner, uh, even Joe Gibbs left here with a worse coaching reputation than when he first started, and that was the only way that, that Mike Shanahan felt like that was the last card he could play in this game. What happens this weekend? I don't know if, depending on what's going on between discussions between lawyers uh, for both sides, I don't know if Mike Shanahan makes it to this weekend if it gets uglier. If he does, in fact, um, and they get blown out against Atlanta, I cannot envision a scenario in which Dan allows his fan base and everybody who's paid good money for season tickets, even though they're not even showing up at the games. I, I can't allow I can't imagine Dan Snyder allows this to become more of a circus than it already has over the years. I, I just can't imagine Shanahan makes it to the following week. I would say odds are um, you know, eighty twenty he's gone by Monday. But I've been wrong before. And to, to be honest, I would love it. I would absolutely love it if Shanahan just said, screw it, I'm going to coach this until they fire me. And and Dan Snyder said, you know what, I'm going to make you Tom Coughlin in 2007 where all of the players wanted him out, all the fans wanted him out, and you know what, the team wasn't good enough. The Mara family decided we're going to keep the guy, and all of a sudden he, he goes off and wins the Super Bowl the next year. I don't think that's going to happen here, but if, but if, if just the keeping Shanahan part of it did – it would be the story for the ages. Two two people that can't stand each other forced to work together. Oh, yeah. I think that that's his penance. That's his punishment. I think Daniel Snyder is going to say, oh, you're going to try to embarrass me? Now I'm going to make you coach the rest of the season. But here's the thing with this weekend. Kurt Cousins, is he starting this game against Atlanta? I, I, I believe he will. Uh, and I, I don't think they'll go back to Robert Griffin the third. And you know what? If you're, if you're Mike Shanahan, you could sell this. You could sell this as I'm protecting the kid. And and everybody who gave me grief for not protecting the kid, well, I'm protecting the kid right now. Is this, I mean, this is like Strasburg, where they're now, they they protected him at the wrong point in the season. Now you got RG3. Now, granted, you don't have anything to play for, but now they care about RG3's health. He shouldn't even have started the first four games, Mike. I was, I was saying, are these guys crazy? Has anybody in management had a knee surgery? If you have, and you're going to ask a quarterback to plant on that foot and throw and then run, you guys are crazy. And then, oh, you know, they didn't want to do that. Can't sit him. No, you know what? And it was, there was some hubris on Dr. James Andrews' part. There was hubris on the organization's part. And there was certainly hubris on Robert Griffin III's part. The bottom line is they never looked at Adrian Peterson's injury as what it should have been, the outlier. Most people, you know, you, you, you know Kobe and Dwayne were weighed as, it, as good as any media person. You've talked to them over the years. They even took six months to a year to look like players again that they used to be after they had knee surgery. Yep. And this was major reconstructive knee surgery. I mean, I, I never expected them to be any good until about halfway through the season. And I figured, they, you know, they'd end up 9-7 and seven if they got their act together. They never did. And now now Robert Griffin the third looks brittle at the end. I, You know, I, I was a big believer in not playing him but if three if these last three games mean nothing and they really do i protect the kid i mean to me to me seeing him answer questions after the atlanta game it just it was almost sickening it was sort of like oh my gosh another guy that had nothing to do with all the bad karma that came before him caught up in this vortex of dan world and it was really sad and not your world dan thank you Snyders. good to visit with you again mike you too, Dan. If I don't talk to you, have a wonderful holiday and Christmas. From all of us talking hairdos, thank you, Mike. <laughs> Mike Wise, Washington Post. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.